represents Europe at yeah. the mid-season Invitational. We're three bands in. Nothing has changed thus Eddie, far. First pick, Thresh, once again for Fnatic. And of course, Hillesheim, one and seven on that Thresh. Of the four champions he's played most, let's exclude the Brahm. Um, really not having a great showing well, on it, that one. It's That's weird. Hillesheim, of course. His individual performance on a champion is fantastic. It's more as a team. They have lost more games on it, and we haven't gone back and watched every single one, so we can't really explain 100% what it is. I think a main uh, concern for them when they don't have the likes of Morgana is it's a lot harder to peel for the likes of Vardax without that Black Shield against this uh, composition that can like dive onto him. And that's also why Fnatic, at least in the last game, were happy enough giving them Thresh, take all the champions in early rotations, and ban that Annie, and simply respecting the hard engage from Hillesang as well. I mean, we have a support pulling two bands and potentially a first pick every single time, the rest of your team should be able to benefit from it. Oh, Hecarim is open, that's a mistake. That, that simple? Banning Rek'Sai against Rainover, we know it is his most played champion, but Rainover's played a number of jungle champions to fantastic success. The pony is locked in against the Unicorns. Yeah, well, if you look at Reynolds champion pool, I guess what Unicorns are trying to do is move him away from early aggressive junglers because Lee Sin and Nidalee has not been the most picked champions for him. He he liked the tanks here in the Cinderhulk meta. He's even played the likes of Olaf before Cinderhulk came out. So he has shown, at least in the past, that if Rek'Sai is gone, it's more about the, the, the slow scaling junglers. And in this case, Fragger's just instantly being locked in. Unicorns put more value on getting the bottom lane and trading that for the Hecarim. We have to see if they can use their more passive approach from Rainover, despite him still being very aggressive in terms of ganks. He's not on the same kind of champion in the early game. And we'll have to see whether or not Unicorns can adjust their vision patterns to maybe play to that effect. Oh, please lock it in. Now, if any team is going to deal with Hecarim in a fancy, flashy way, it is the Unicorns of Lab. Febivin has played Zera three times, one all Yeah, he's not going to play it, but his Zera is just so insane that I love watching him play. They don't have to pick the mid laner here for Fnatic. You can go with the AD carry. If you want the Kalista matchup into Zera, you can take that one again for yourself. Otherwise, Lucian has been a good pick for Steelback, where they run these compositions where they kind of protect him as a hyper carry, and they allow him late game at least to have a massive impact. They tend to run the likes of Janna and Nuno with it, so with Nautilus being logged in, it would be a different style. The other thing, but Lucian is still a good pick for them. The other thing to note, hover picks are not something we tend to like to talk about as casters because they change so often. But one thing you cannot deny, Febivin flashing the Zera with a jungler that is relatively slow. You get wave clear from Zera flashing the Anivia for the control for the late game. Does it plant seeds of doubt in the Unicorn's minds? That is something we need to see how it plays out. I think there is a, there's a lot of un touched nuances to the pick and ban phase that can actually affect players' sure. mindsets. You see a Zillion, you don't think it's a lock-in. You see a Feb of Zerath, you go, you know what, that's not too crazy. I can almost guarantee you the teams don't really care because they already have the sights on their own picks and they wait to see what's been locked in on the other side. But yeah, I mean, you got a point with them sitting and discussing it. Question is, will Unicorns go back to slow scaling, long range AP or at long range well, Udi has been lucky. We love, love Kikis. Mr. Cameraman, wherever you are, you deserve a cookie. For finding that guy and also flashing at the moment the Man Bear Pig is locked in. Udia, Irelia, Siva. If Unicorns were ever going to overwhelm you, this was the team come to do it with. So this is kind of different for Unicorns of Love. Normally when they play Udia, it's in these kite compositions with their long range poke mid laner and a big tank top laner who kites with them. Crowd really wants Timo. <laughs> I can't hear you over Timo. But, but I'm afraid it's not gonna happen. But now Aurelia's been locked in, so with this, it's more dive onto Fnatic. And that's where Udia is not always the strongest because he gets kited around fairly easily. When he's against Nautilus, he's against the Gragas. Lucian has their mobility as well to dance around the Udia. And suddenly he's not going to offer a whole lot if you want to dive the back line. He's a lot better in kite comps. So that's a little bit weird from them. Oh, that was getting close, but they got the Lucian in the very end. And Fnatic has a bit of everything here, honestly. There's good wave clear. You have the all-in potential. You have to, to engage from, from Hecarim, from Nautilus to get onto these immobile picks that Power Weaver has liked to play. 
And you got good damage all around from early game to late game, honestly, with Lucian, Ari, and Hecron. So a lot of options on the Fnatic squad. Just a good, well-rounded comp. They can do little bits of everything for Unicorns at the moment. And he's really about throwing themselves okay. at your opponent. The only player in Europe to play Syndra all year long for the seventh time will be running Syndra in the middle lane. Nobody else is playing this champion but Power of Evil, and it is... Screw it, it's his champion. It is his champion here in Europe, at least. When when the nerfs came in, with their Q damage went down, their eager nerfs as well was a lot thinner suddenly. A lot of the pro players were tweeting, Syndra, she's horrible now, she's not going to be played anymore, we're never going to pick her. The next day, Power People said, well, here's Syndra, I'm going to lock it in and win the game. So for him, he still thinks it's a fantastic champion. And this is going to fit better with what Unicorns have built now, in terms of we need to dive onto Fnatic in our uh, with our comp here, we have the Sivir ulti, we have the Aurelia, and now the one-shot potential from Syndra. I still do think this Udyr is kind of misplaced in that kind of composition, because he's so much better when it comes to you kiting and you drawing out fights. This is not what Unicorns want to do. They want to have quick fights where they burst down a target within a, within a few seconds of the true damage from Aurelia, ult from Sivir, and of course, the Syndra ulti. Well, we'll find out if they can make that happen. As we touched on, Hillisang on that Thresh, one and seven as far as his record is concerned. Power of Evil 3-3 three and three on that Syndra. He does not miss stuns often. No. And if Steelback is out of position, it could really hurt. There's those team comps. One more time. The pick and ban strategy has altered with Rek'Sai banned away. Mooney plays Hecarim for the third time. Will it be a win in game three of this best of five? Fnatic on the blue side. And get themselves off to exciting starts. And I want to see what Power Weevil skills at level 1, because he's one of the players who adapted to the nerfs to the Q, and he decided to skill W first, because that's 80 base damage, where the Q is 55 at level 1. So he skills W level 1 to surprise the enemy and win the first few trades, and then he maxes Q right after, so that's still going to be maxed first, obviously for the passive as well. I want to see if he's doing the same and if he gets a good trade on Febivan, because that's one of the ways he tends to get an early lead in his lanes when he plays Syndra. Kick is, is going to have to be very active on the map. He has fantastic clear on an Udyr. He has fantastic mobility when it comes to moving around the map, but his ganks can be somewhat lackluster. They often, I disagree. Oh, often rely, slap. I was about to say, <laughs> often rely on a flash to make it work. So he flash in, bear slaps them. And also, when he plays Udyr, he does red buff and he does level two gank. Three out of three times in playoffs, Let's see if Huni, with no flash, is smart enough to have down an early ward. Notice how he didn't place a ward at level 1, so that's still ready for him. And once he returns to lane, if Kikis is coming for that level 2 gang. Flash bear slap. Do you believe in 4 out of 4? We'll have to find out, as definitely not Udia is going to start on his traditional red buff. I want to quickly quote that video we saw just before Pekka was interviewed. Vardag's touching on how good Unicorns are in best of fives and how they can adapt. They have adapted, and we'll see whether or not their decision making and strategy pays off. Deficio, we've been hovering power people for a little while. He skilled the Q. Yeah, I guess his first point. I guess he only does a W against Cassidy in our melee matchups, then decides to get Q at level one for the trades. I just wanted to see, you know, not much of a single player myself, but it's one of the small things you notice with Power Weevil when you try and see what he normally does. Kick is. Are you going to go to that top lane once the two guys TP up there and kill the no-flash Hecarim? He's running in chicken form. <laughs> There's no ward yet. Will he sit and wait in the bush before the ward even gets placed from Kikis? The TP has to come in from Chachi. Oh, you have to place the ward instantly, no. Huni. Chicken form, chicken form, bear form! No flash this time because there's not enough support. Huni has done his homework. Huni has Thank done... you. Wow, no flash bear slap yet. Kick is still looking for it. Level 2 gank did not work out. Equilibrium Strike did not really do a whole lot there from Bizachachi. We do see those early level 2s, and Kick is unable to make it 4 for 4. The man, Bear, Pig, Turtle, Phoenix, Tiger thing goes back into the jungle to continue farming up. Yeah, and with uh, Fnatic or with Reyno was starting on his own red buff, he couldn't really take too much advantage of. Kick is here because he just showed himself quickly. Invading into blue a little bit late could have been very risky for him. Instead, he's going to go for a gang on this Aurelia. Well, let's see. Not a lot of mana on Chachi. He's going to flash away Huni and Rainover. 
Gonna get some damage down, and that might dissuade Vizachachi from playing aggressively. Oi! That's definitely not a good ward. <laughs> uh, I think he knows everyone saw that one. But to get back to the point, without a flash on Vizachachi, maybe that's gonna buy some safety and some time for Huni in that top lane. He does have Ignite, so if Vizachachi continues to stick around at low HP, maybe Huni can look to set up a surprise kill. Look, Rainover's coming in from yeah. the Tri-Bush. He's gonna get gonna spotted, be spotted the ward. ward. The value. What a difference it's gonna make. Remember, there's no flash in Vizichachi. Rainover's gonna land the body slam. Red buff's ticking away, and he's gonna get first blood. Such a good start from Fnatic. Everything from the early ward from Huni to spot the Udyr, and then just saying we're against an Aurelia. She's one of the lane bullies that if you shut her down and delay her Trinity Force, she falls really, really far behind. So I really like the early ganks here from Fnatic. And if you get a lead on Hecarim in this matchup, you can be so annoying with your passive because you obviously ignore the, the minion. So you can stand on a minion. The way normally for Aurelia to probably trade is like you jump in on a minion, kill it, then you E, and then you have your Q ready if someone tries to run away. You can't do it against Hecarim because he's sitting on that minion you want to jump to. So if you get a lead as Hecarim in that matchup, you can just be so annoying also just deny her farm. Well, somebody else that's annoying is Kikis. Not able to get the same early advantage he has in previous games, but three and one. Still pretty good KDA. For pretty Nudia. good KDA. And it's traditionally been picked into very good team comps. This is the first time to fish I've heard you say you're not entirely convinced. All three previous games, it actually made quite a lot of sense. Yes, again, because there was poke compositions that wanted to kite, where a low cooldown on your stun as an Udyr, the fact you get your turtle shield so you're so tanky that these double tank comps can't really kill you, or the low damage comps when it's against the likes of Urgot, we can say. Here, it's just very different. There's a lot of burst from Fnatic to take him down. And he's not here to peel anymore. He's here to dive in with the rest of the team. And I just want to see what he can do in fights. Because he has the tendency to just get kited around. Like one slow on him from the from, from an Nautilus. And you need that flash. Uh, Vardags will be trying to help out that weakness on the hunt, of course. The big tool. We've not actually taken a look at many of the other lanes thanks to all the focus. Top mid lane going even on farm. Febivan with a defensive start, opting into the Negatron Cloak first. Typical as we start. Oh, hey. he got it. There we go, boys. And now he's going to get a gang off. But Reynova is here. Ready for the counter gang. Counter gank is available. Remember, Hoodie does have Ignite. Chilling Smite goes down. He knocks Kickers back. Kickers actually flashes defensively. No flash. Best slap this time around. Turns into Phoenix Stance. And he's going to get forced away. Reynova reading Kickers' Udia like a book. Hoodie's just hit level six. There's an onslaught of shadows. They're going to go in. That's going to be a two man onslaught. That's another kill for Hoodie. He's going to get himself a double kill. And Holo Holo has landed. Remember, it wasn't banned out. Steel back gets caught by Hillisag's death sentence. Hillisag catches everyone with death sentences. Exhaust has been survived through. Yellow Star trying to get damage down, but they're forced to retreat. Vardax so much healthier. And Unicorns of Love win the 2v2 in the bottom lane. But they're not winning enough. No. Because Huni is 2-0-1. Yeah, that's the big deal here. Both lanes for Fnatic on the bottom side of the map. Mid and bot lane is sitting back farming, honestly, playing it fairly safe, knowing that Reyno was putting all his focus on that top lane. Because the thing is, best case for Reynova and Huni, they dive the Aurelia, kill her again. Worst case, you find the Udia there and you get a 2v2 lane that you're going to win anyway. So there's really no bad scenario for you. As long as you keep providing assistance for Huni on that Hecarim. Such a strong start, rushing that frozen heart. So there's going to be no kill pressure for this Aurelia in the one-on-one -on -one lane. And this is backfired completely from the Unicorns of Love. They banned Rek'Sai, allowing Huni to just instant lock Hecarim as the first pick. Huni has consistently shown how scary he is on carry-type top laners. And he shocked the European LCS with his Hecarim performances. There's a Chachi, 0-2 down behind NCS. He's opted to go double Gorons. Not only is he under so much pressure, that Trinity Force spike is going to be a long way away. Let's see what Huni can do. Standing on top of those minions, exactly like you talked about, Nefisio. And Huni is just rampaging his way across. It's almost an onslaught of shadows. Ignite burning through. Huni's looking for more. And yeah. he just one be once visit Chachi. The crowd is trying. Oh. <laughs> it's getting there. <laughs> There's a reason this chairman has been banned in every single game in the playoffs against Fnatic. And 
this. Till now. I mean, what is Unicorn the Love gonna do? Okay, if your top lane is losing this hard, you just gotta surrender that lane. You can't keep trying to gank for it because you're not gonna win the fights. I mean, Hoon at this point might even be able to 1v2 if he has his summoners ready. Wow. So you, you gotta try. Eight minute frozen heart. That's the thing. Yo. Now you gotta try making plays on either mid or the bottom lane. But you had no flash on that Udyr. We said how his ganks are not very good unless you have that flash ready. So you can't really get in anywhere. There's a million wards on the bottom side. They expect him to show up at some point. They even send him his judge down here now. <laughs> who needs who needs wow. got teleport available and call it one, two, three, six, seven wards. They're just gonna dive charge here as well. They can see everything on the map. If they go in and poke him, have Raynor will wait for the minions to hit the tower. Chachi is dead again. Look in the mid lane though, maybe Febivin will get caught out. Death Sentence does not manage to connect and Febivin. Unsure of Power of Evil's position. Remember, there was no minions middle lane. Very, very defensive. Rain over. He's going to knock for the Chachi backwards. The depth charge is going to go out. You cannot flash away from that. The culling landing shots off the shot. And the dredge line will be able to allow Fnatic to get their fifth kill of the game. Visit Chachi's Irelia is going to do nothing this game. Udia and Thresh trying to get blue buff. Hoonies trying to get in a range. The smite does manage to secure the buff. But at what cost? They've lost their top laner. This is Unicorns of Love, and they're going to lose their bottom tower. I do think it was a fine play. Oh, let's see what happens here. And he's going to just oh, uh, onslaught of shadows over the so, wall. Vodex tried to interrupt. The plan from Unicorns of Love was okay here, saying we're not going to get anything in, in our lane, so we have to swap it around, try and fast push a tower to get some kind of gold. That was fine. Problem was, Vici Chachi. As soon as he shows himself in the lane, Fnatic was already ready to kill him once again. Not that he's worth a whole lot of gold, but if they can at least trade towers, Unicorns get something. Well, something is better than nothing. As Vardax is trying to deny as many minions as possible, does secure a tower trade. Still 2,000 gold down at the 10 minute mark. A dragon down. And we'll need to see how on earth the mythical unicorns control the power pony. Because between the two of us, I don't think we can think of many options. <laughs> no, Huni is just... There's nobody who can one-on-one -on -one him at any point of the game. In this... Uh, with the way he's playing and with these early kills for him. Aurelia. So, three on well, one him. Let's see if they the can do it. Bear Slap comes down. Onslaught of Shadows is not available, nor is there a flash. Here comes the rest. That's a okay. flash death sentence. Hillisite connects, plays him backwards. You don't need to one-on-one -on -one when you can 3v1. Hoonie gets taken out. They're not done yet. There's the flash bear slap. Phoenix starts. The Dark Sphere stun does not connect. Power of Evil is going to unleash his power. Not even needed to. As it's Kikis that gets a second kill of the game. Power of Evil realizing they had the damage and he held on to his ulti in case anything further goes forward. Fnatic just a little out of position. Yeah, very, very good response from Unicorns of Love. They're reading a situation saying you're not going to get anything in the middle or bottom lane so we can go up with three guys. We can Teleport. gank your Hecarim and now he wants some revenge. Well, let's see what he can do. Onslaught is going to throw Hillislang over. That's going to be a dead thresh. Kill goes to Steelback. Who's the TP and the ulti for that? It's going to relieve some pressure in the mid lane. Well, it does mean now teleport advantage to the very underfarmed Vizachachi. I doubt they can make a big difference with it, but keep in mind it is available. We'll see how that works out. It can be one of the ways to get at least a few kills on him if they get a good oh, fight. Oh, scatter the weak, and there's the unleashed power. Summon a heal, use Culling going down. Look at the backup from Fimfin. He's coming from behind. Power of Evil should go down to the Ignite in a moment or two as Vardax eats himself a barrel roll. There's the challenging spike. Here comes Chachi, didn't need to use the TP. He's in a 3v1, and it's Fimfin with the flanking maneuver. Fnatic get two more kills and a tower shortly. Just a nice little roam from the bottom lane from Febivan had already pushed it up. Chachi is level seven. The same as Yellowstar. Can he get a kill? Well, we'll find out. On the hunt is down and rain over seems they to They gotta be. give it to him. They have to give it to Chachi here. Out. It's actually a Phoenix stance, I believe, that ticked that one over. Or it could have even been uh, Cinder Hulk, I guess. Unicorns of Lab. That's a good charm for Febivan, but he doesn't have a lot of mana or any ulti to play with. Unicorns now, they're playing scrappy. Remember, these teams, when they get scrappy, they do this all game long. All of a sudden, Kickers, he's got no flash. He bare stuns the pony who he's trying to run him down. Onslaught of Shadow is not available, but he's going to just prance his way over. Kickers gets another stun. Turtle shields up, continues to run away. Can he make it to the saving the hand? A power of evil. Scatter the weak, saves Kickers. 
kick is manages to make his way out. Eight to three, but still 3,000 gold down. Yeah, and Fnatic, despite losing a few kills here and there, they're still looking to push their advantage. Hillisang is all alone now. TP coming in from Chachi. I guess it came in somewhat handy for himself. And Unicorns of Love trying their best to at least get some gold in this game. You're trying to punish Fnatic if they do overextend. The risk is always when you have these 1-3-1, one, one, all the lanes pushing. If one guy's overextended, you can go ganking with two or three guys and not lose anything elsewhere. So that was a good call earlier. Fnatic is looking to not do that again and just use your Hecarim that is so far ahead. Only person who can kill him is really Power Weevil here. Unless it's three guys on him. Power Weevil doesn't want to one-on-one -on -one him. It's more, I guess, if there is a team fight with the Frozen Heart Rush, Loot and Seiko, which is, again, and I think Power Weevil, he loves to do on these AP it's mages. his favorite item. He rushes Loot and Seiko to be as strong as possible on one or two items and try and snowball his own lead from there, and then forget to watch his death cap and so on a lot faster than he normally would by wow. just getting some kills. But he has to get the kills to make it pay off. Tower should go to Fnatic. He has no teleport available from Unicorns of Lab or support. Will they be trading it down at the bottom lane? Bottom lane, rather. That's a great stun from Scatter the Weak. Power of Evil unleashes his power if Vizachachi tries to follow through. No ignite available, and we do see Febivan able to spirit rush his way away. There's a Chachi and Power of Evil now left alone in this bottom lane. They are going to get caught up by the depth charge. There's a Chachi only got a sheen to play with. Dredge line connects to Power of Evil. He manages to stun up Huni, but that's not going to be enough. Kill credit is secured by Yellow Star. And look at the mid lane now. is going to get traded. Unicorns, Unicorns are fighting back. They are. They keep trying to find some way of getting gold. Fnatic used all five guys on the bottom lane to get one kill. And they're going to lose one gonna tower. tower. And this well? one is this going to drop very, very low. Now Raynov is here. Oh, Kikis might even take he might try and sacrifice himself. trying to do it for the global gold. I think that's a smart move. Two towers. Oh, here comes Huni. He's on the back line. Exhaust is up from Hillisak. Vardex low on mana. On the hunt was used. He's trying to get away. Culling on the side way. Fade away shots. Vardex spell shields up one of those rampages, but it just keeps going. Huni's got mana and attacks for days. Death sentence does pull Huni into the tower, but you do not want that. Unicorns are clawing this game back. I thought they were on, you know, on pace to have their biggest goal deficit at 20 minutes, but this is just <laughs> not the case, thanks to the fact that they are ahead in towers. Yeah, they should never even be close when you're toppling a 0-4 after, like, what, eight minutes in the game. Huni was so far ahead, but Fnatic has simply just honestly been a bit greedy and punished. So Unicorn's keeping it very, very cool. They still have a good comp when it comes to the mid game. If they can get that Trinity Force completed for Chachi, all the global gold is going to help him a lot. Still far behind Huni, about 1,500 gold in total. But as we said before, it's something. And the Unicorns. It's, it's unbelievable to think they found four towers against Fnatic. You were touching on the wave clear that they had and the, the lanes that they could offer. And all of a sudden, Fnatic, they, they lose focus of that slow, controlled game from number two in the series. Seems to be focusing on trying to shut down Unicorns individually, losing sight of the bigger picture. So, we're approaching 17 minutes, 10 kills to three, down on towers. That gold is now only a 1,500 difference. I mean, it was, what, three, 4K at the 10 minute mark. We still have to see how this booty is going to impact the game, Deficient. Yeah, we need to see in the team fights what it can do. That's going to be the big one for Kikis. We might have to. Wait a little bit because Fnatic has gone back to the 131 that has or oh, that was gonna be the game plan before they started roaming around. Yeah, comes Yellow Star. Yeah, Chachi is still level nine, so I think he's gonna go down here. Spirit Rash goes up, Charm connects, Riptide goes up, Fippin should be able to get that one. He does. Yellow Star's even able to secure the kill and the poor fellow with a broken leg there. Mumu cosplay is almost yeah. Oh shame. I broke my wrist last year, I can feel your pain. Well, I guess I didn't have to use crutches. Yours is worse. Fnatic now in the top lane. They've got vision in the top half of the map. Teleport is available for Huni. He's in base. Got those home guards charged up. And they might be diving Kikis. Look at the TP coming yeah, in. Kikis on his own, yeah. Here comes Huni. 
He's gonna jump in to kick his teleport from Visa Chachi. It might be too late. Cooney continues to spin that Guitar Hero axe around. It's caught by the Equilibrium Strike and holds onto his Onslaught to Shadow for the team fight. That's a flash death sentence. Connects onto Yellow Star, followed through. Does get interrupted by the Barrel Roll. The support of Fnatic is down, but there's the Onslaught of Shadows. Cooney is just tearing Unicorns apart, trying to run forward. Now, steal back. Can he play Janitor and clean house? That's the question. Visa Chachi now from the back line. Unicorns are scattered and low, and it looks like Fnatic should be able to clean up. Body slam goes up. It's still alive. Keep the gets it. Alive. He gets the kill. The Unicorns of Love win the team fight 2v4, and Power of Evil stuns up Feverfit. Can he do more? He's got no mana. There's not much support. The Unicorns of Love turn the team fight around. It's insane. He better get a replay of that one. I don't even know what's going on, how Unicorns can still be in this game. They just keep finding the right place. Fnatic, they were the ones diving on Kikis. Didn't kill him. The rest of Unicorns showed up. They were still fighting on the tower. Let's see the replay. So we missed the first start, but still, Kikis is just running around tanking off damage <laughs> at okay. this point here. Vardex was left untouched until now, and he's just cleaning up suddenly. <laughs> Udia, and then shield. Turtle Shield, there's no damage from the Gragas. <laughs> and in the end, double kill. That was four kills for the Unicorns of Love. Still only 1,000, no, 400 gold behind. Deficio, I've seen this before. In the quarterfinals, Gambit got themselves to a 10, 12, 13 minute lead. Made some tower dives that Unicorn said, yes, please. Give me them dives, give me them kills. And Unicorns grabbed control of the game. Fnatic have just done something so, so similar. Yeah. Evened up the gold, and they are gifting unicorns pressure and presence in this game. And the crazy thing is, if you saw what happened before the dive, it was Feverman showing up two levels above Visichachi, jumped onto him, and killed him. So basically, you don't even have to team fight if you're Fnatic. You can just split push because Chachi can't even duel Yellow Star. That's a lie, he can. It was a joke, but. Well, you can also just see Power of Evil die. Power of Evil gets jumped on. Fnatic now get themselves a relatively easy kill. Death Charge goes out, they catch Hillisack. Culling is going to cull him down, but it's Hootie that gets the last hit. We do see Kick is now trying to defend the tower. That's not going to be enough. Fnatic with a decisive engage this time. Will get themselves two kills in that tower. We do see Kick is caught out. He will be dropping as well. Unicorns of Love are the ones making the mistakes. Yellowstar pulls himself halfway towards Vardax. And all of a sudden, Fnatic say, we want this game, and they get that 3,000 gold lead back. Yeah. Finally, it was Fnatic catching out the Unicorns here. Also, fighting outside of a tower was the big deal. But the point before was simply that Fnatic had so many ways they could play. You could 1-3-1 it and just keep being a bully against Chachi because he couldn't duel anyone, and you would just always push down that lane, always have the pressure to push up all the lanes at once, where they knew one of them couldn't be defended by the Aurelia. They decided to go for all the fights instead, which, as you said, Unicorns were obviously very happy about because it was on the towers very early on. That being said, you still have four kills on Huni. You just got a Trinity Force on Visichachi. So it's definitely still in favor of Fnatic. And we saw that last fight, what they can do once they're the ones catching out the Unicorns. Big items picked up elsewhere. Frozen Heart for Kickers, Righteous Glory for Rainover, more engaged power. Actually, Righteous Glory on Yellow Star as well. All that global gold and kills. Meaning there are so many tools. Huni unable to use that devastating charge to interrupt Visit Chachi. Righteous Glory is such a good item. After the buff as well, it's made it even better. And that was one of the reasons Nautilus as support became so strong. Because you go for that item. 650 HP. And also. The speed up. Let's see here. Chachi is spotted by Huni. Can get a lantern if he wants it. Try to jump on that one. Dragon secured. Kick has tried to get in. Does not steal it. Gets pulled back by the dredge line. He will go down. Tried to outsmite Fnatic and it did not work out. At 22 minutes, three dragons secured. Despite the swings back and forth, Fnatic are on course for a five dragon game. Again, unless unicorns can turn this one around. Yeah, not exactly the same kind of late game power for them away. Tele play teleports the just become available for Huni, and he recalled the Fisio. I think we're about to see him jump into a fight. Let's see. There is a teleport coming out. He's coming down mid. 
Unicorns are split up. Vardax, the rest of Unicorns down. Devastating charge, he's running. He jumps in, he does get played backwards. Reducing the dive forward, the onslaught of Shadows. That's the first kill, that's the second kill. Power of Evil is in full retreat. He may need to flash the wall. Unicorns of Love had no business being there without their Junglan, arguably main tank. They get punished for it, lose two. Fnatic, turn their attention to the Baron. Just, unicorns can't really leave their own towers. Every time it's gone bad for Fnatic, it's been around the towers of Unicorns where they've managed to punish them. Now they move out. We're gonna see if they can stop wow. this one. Harvey was dead. Chachi's gonna die. Wow, that's gonna be an that's easy gonna one. Be Baron. Is gonna well, get shot okay. down reply as Visit Chachi not. gets the kill credit. Baron is going low. Less than half. Kickers and Visit Chachi trying to do what they can. There's a few low health bars as Kickers has got a lot. They the immediately peel. That's a dead Visit Chachi. There's a lot of critical hits coming down into Kickers as they try to focus him out. Booty gets a summon a heal from Steelback. That'll keep him alive just a few seconds longer. Fnatic and what is effectively a delayed ace. Cheers from Yellow Star's family. Baron not secure. Ooh. Well, oh, he's on his own. Okay, that's, that's yeah, not worth a whole lot, I'm afraid. Unicorns have left 5,000 gold down. They're 14 kills down, but they're not giving up without a fight. No, that's very true, and they know they do still have some one-shot potential with the Syndra. The problem is whenever they're fighting away from their own base. Fnatic has all the map control in terms of warding and can get these TPs from Huni, can get the right engages. And then they are still that much stronger to just power through the Unicorns of Love. There's nothing really to protect Power of Evil here. Thresh is not going to do a whole lot against the Hecarim flying in and the Nautilus ulti. And he has no defensive items, that's going to be quite delayed. Oh! <laughs> you, had you had to say it. You had to say it. Can't do anything, but he can steal blue buff. <laughs> It's the small things that count. You can't predict that. You can't predict oh, yeah. that. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Fnatic still maintain control. They are 1-1 one, one in the series. The victory here will put them one game away from Florida, from Tallahassee, from lifting that trophy and making the fourth LCS split victory for Fnatic out of five. What a mind-boggling accomplishment for the organization and for the teams over the last two and a half years. No matter what happens today, though, then the Unicorns of Love can be very proud of what they've done in the first split in the LCS. This game, while it doesn't look good for them, they can still try and create some picks that's what they're going for here on Rainover. Here comes Huni, he does get stunned up. The Death Sentence, I believe it did connect. Unleashed Power still being held on there by Power of Evil. Fnatic are now split up. Vivim is looking for a target. He's managed to catch Bardex and Rainover has managed to catch Power of Evil. Power of Evil does take down Huni after all the damage earlier on. Stunned faces from the audience as the fight continues to break up. Two for three, but the tanks of Fnatic are tearing through the Unicorns of Love. Visit Chachi is in full retreat and kick is. I don't care how big your Bear Stars Turtle Shield is, it's not going to be enough. Dredge line backwards. This should be more kills. That's a stop from equilibrium strike. He does manage to survive. Now Chachi's the one that's in trouble. He's gonna dash over to the Raptors. Raptors landing auto attacks on Florida. It's a three for three. Stay alive. I am wrong. I am wrong. As the turtle shield burst on monster <laughs> survives again. Yeah, he does manage to stay alive. Let's see the fight. So Unicorns of Love saying we need to try and create some picks when Huni cannot get the right engage onto us. He drops really low in the start. Notice how Fibrin on the top of your screen is coming in while Steelback is down on the bottom. So they're onto the back line of Unicorns very, very early. Vardex goes down, Power Beaver will follow. And it's just about doing as much damage as possible before and see if your two tanks can then clean up. Nice little pick for Visichachi and then Fibrin jumping into melee range of an Aurelia and an Udyr. That's gonna cost you your life. It ends up being the three for three. And we can really see how Unicorns as well are trying to itemize for like creating these quick picks and just not getting the big explosive five on five with the Huni TP. And they're gonna get for another one. <laughs> uh, Yellowstar, the unleashed power of evil. 
Gets the burst damage down, and Unicorns find a pick. What can they do with it? They want steal back. He does not have flash available. Starts to channel the color. He's trying to look for Hillisang. The Death Sanders doesn't get it. It doesn't matter. These Unicorns of Love have found two. They've got minions backing up behind them, and the Unicorns now are the inner turret. They may be able to get this one. Hooney's in the top lane, pushing. Unicorns of Love refuse to give up. That's what you gotta admire. The crowd as well. Cheering for the Unicorns of Love. They're gonna try and go for more. Five seconds on Yellow Star. Top lane, Hooney's recalling now. Does this tower should go down unless Febbyman and Hooney jumps in. Well, we do see the home guards from Hooney. Unicorns of Love. He's gonna maybe try and TP. This blue pings onto Baron. Where do Fnatic want to go? Vision this game has been so much more effective for Fnatic every time you look at the minimap. It is just blue dots. And look at the Unicorns. They're looking towards the dragon instead to try and stop the five dragons. Fnatic, they know this is going to happen. There's a chance for it. They will even see the Unicorns of Love on it. Zero wards on this Baron. Do they smell it and can they get there in time? Two guys are stuck on the dragon for the Unicorns of Love. Well, the dragon will delay that five dragon counter. There's the teleport coming out from Vizachachi. Baron was it's hitting enough. low. They have managed to force them away. Vizachachi, will the barrel be used? Not even needed. Righteous glory. But I think so important. Baron stopped and dragon secured. Unicorns, two small victories in a game where they are scrapping for any opportunity possible. But they keep looking for them. And even though they had a 0-4 top lane and they got towers in the early game, if they stop this Dragon, or this Baron, sorry, it was successful for them. Here's a TP from Huni. It's gonna be tough. And Power Beaver is gonna die. Oh, Power of Evil is obliterated! As Huni and Feverbin stack up for two more kills. Banshee's Battle is popped. Kickers could flash in for a steal. I don't think they'll let him go. Bardax is going to get soloed up by Hooney. Onslaught to Shadows to run him down. Devastating charge to keep close. And the Rampage secures the kill. Steelback actually flashed forward for that one. And Fnatic secure the first Baron of Game 3. With Death Timers still ticking away. They're hammering away on the inhibitor turrets. And we'll be able to get this one down as well for them. Don't really care about losing that Dragon at this point for Fnatic. Base is now open for the Unicorns of Love. It's looking tricky. So despite all the effort for them, the bills that have come in here, I love the cooldown reduction from Fresh. We'll can talk about that one after. First, well, I mean, there's been so many kills. You can see how Vizichachi is dead for now 20 seconds. And with Uni TP, Power of Evil staying around with no flash. There's not a whole lot he can do. He did still a ban with a shockwave before. Oh. Not gonna happen this time. So like the build from, from Hillisang, he's aiming for 30% cooldown reduction. So you got the cooldown reduction boots, you got face of the mountain, that's 10% and 5% for masteries. And basically what you have is now your death sentence, the Q. Every time you connect it, it goes down with another three seconds. So the overall cooldown is 8.4. If you land it, it goes down to 5.4 seconds. So you can keep spamming out hooks and try and pull someone in that Power Weaver can then one shot. And that's one of the ways Unicorns have tried to get back in the game by getting as many options of connecting CC to create picks. And while they've gotten quite a lot, and they've done a great job at least staying somewhat relevant, Fnatic has still been in the lead ever since the first gang on Mr. Charging in the top lane. Definitely the case. Now we're going to get a base race. Does look to be. Yellow Star actually cancelled that recall until a moment ago. Now Febbivan's peeling away. Steelback is left alone to go for the bottom lane inhibitor. The soup is pouring through the middle lane. Keep that in mind. The rest of Fnatic now defending in the top lane. Steelback is going to go onto that inhibitor. Hoodie, he gets caught by that death sentence. Hoodie on sorts of way. He manages to stay alive. But look at Fordax. Febbivan is just melting his HP. Fordax forces you to summon a heal to stay alive. And Reino is looking for the kill credit. We do see Yellowstar going in, auto attack, lands the anchor, and it's the Culling that picks up the kill. We did see Steelback backing away and joining the fight, of course, as Chachi now is going to get caught up by the Ardent Blaze. Rainover looking for more, they find themselves three kills. Hooney Super minions in the even base. managed to survive. Minions on the bottom tower, there's no teleport for Huni, but look at the rest of the carries. They're pouring through the middle lane. Rainover is going to delay Hillisang, and you know what? Doesn't even matter, Vizichachi is going to be left alone. Hillisang should be shut down, and the rest of Fnatic, they're setting their sights on the Nexus. We'll get a kill on Hillisang as well. Can Chachi defend on his own? Huni was tanking the tower here. Everybody's alive now, Deficio. Wow, five seconds, I should say. Yeah, Fnatic at least got the inhibitor in the bottom lane. And then back away, and once again, try and play a little bit safe.
The burst damage from Febivin onto Bardax at the start of that fight, and the fact that Huni he got caught by one of those death sentences you touched on, Deficio. It's just too little at the moment. Unicorns are unable to make those death sentences really count. And it's Fnatic that are in absolute control. Should be looking to close this one out, but there's a lot of questions for Fnatic during this game here. I mean, with the start they got and how Unicorn still managed to stay relevant was honestly amazing from, from, from the Unicorns and some misplays from Fnatic. I'm sure they're going to talk about them between the games here and be ready for game, <laughs> game four. What we have seen, though, from Fnatic is whenever they play these early comps... Oh, so they have got Febivin. The Onslaught doesn't actually connect with anybody. Febivin does stay alive. The reactive play from Fnatic, but what did it cost? We saw Irelia, Siva burn their ulti, steal back Febivin, Rain over, and Huni. So, team fight advantage in favor of UOL in abilities, but item and gold in favor of Fnatic, and of course, supers in two lanes. I believe the Baron buff has in fact worn off. We do see Vizachachi's course. Wow, only two of them. Chachi is just, I mean, he's gotten Stinger. <laughs> yeah, it's not been his game. That's it was taken away say. from him. I think it was, fair. it was. He was camped very, very hard by Fnatic, who predicted the movement from Kikis, the level two gank and everything, and then simply just turned it around against Chachi. And they're really shown whenever they have a comp that can make plays early in, early and mid-game, they can really snowball against the Unicorns of Love. A lot of praise to Reino, but the red kick is so, so well. Summoning mean, Kikis has not adapted his Udia strategy. Fnatic onto the last remaining inhibitor turret. It is now down. Vardax has rejoined his team. And with the support of Vardax, Fnatic opt to play safe and in fact back away. Dragon is spawning in two seconds. That might be the objective. They're gonna have Huni TP in. I think it's just him recalling on his own. There are some wards in the base. He's on wow. his way now. Well, there's the rest of Fnatic. They're now moving back into the base. Huni's coming from behind. You did see that TP in defensive onslaught of Shadows, in fact, as he throws it backwards. Power of Evil up in the top lane is getting culled away by Steelback. We did see Feverman use the Hourglass to stay alive. Steelback flashes forward. He's got the triple. Now looking for more. In a sight, he's going to make it back onto the lasers. Huni is going to get dropped down. Steelback tries to chase further, not going to be able to secure it. Fnatic turn their attention to the Nexus turrets. This will be the game. And Fnatic put themselves 2 1 up. Championship point in the Spring Split. Not over just yet, as a few more minions pour through. Steelback gets is that gonna be a another penta? kill. It will not be, as it is in fact Reino, but that secures the ace. Fnatic 2 1 in the Spring Split Championship Finals. What a start to the game for them. Getting Huni so fit. This was the champion. Unicorns of Love allowed Fnatic to get by banning Rek'Sai. I think Reino very clearly showed it's not the champion, it's no. the player. Yep. In terms of the early game control he does offer, the Gragas was so spot on for him all game long. Unicorns of Love, full credit to them for getting back in this game or trying to get back. They traded towers for kills. They got four towers down with Fnatic only at two because Fnatic were chasing around for kills. They yeah. punished them if they were overextending. So they really tried to do everything, everything they could after such a bad start. But Fnatic in the end was still so far ahead. And then once we got these big team fights out in the open, they were way, way stronger and could always dive on to, to power. And evil. you have to talk about that Udyr again. You know, Unicorns are a team that innovate. They do new things. They change up. The moment Udyr was locked in, you instantly went Flash, Bear Slab, level two, red, red buff gank. Kickers did it. He was read like a book, and Rainover just punished over and over and over. Yeah. They cannot afford Udia's to give. too weak early game to, to fight. You cannot afford to give up Hecarim and then just do the same strat you've done every single time. And allow yourself to be counted. So Unicorns of Love learn a tough lesson. They are now one game away from placing second in the Spring Split. To break down that third game, we're gonna hand it over to the analyst desk. Thank you very much. Well, time will tell if the lesson will indeed be learned or if they will make the same mistakes. I'd like to uh, throw you guys something that I heard that casters talk about being. Fnatic, they had a huge lead and still Unicorns of Love managed to scrape back. They're going to have to think about that. How much of that do you think is true, knowing that 
Fnatic had such a big lead, they were able to build up in the beginning. Won't that be enough to give them enough confidence going into the last game? It should give them enough confidence. Like, Unicorns of Love had a plan. They left Hecarim open, and when you leave Hecarim against Huni open, you know he's going to pick uh, Hecarim. <laughs> so they wanted that Irelia against Hecarim in the top lane, and their plan was to go that same cheese, what they always do with the Udyr. Do red buff first, gank the lane on the red buff side, which is the top lane in that situation. But Fnatic actually watched the replay, so they <laughs> saw that coming, and they counterplayed it perfectly. They were there, they counterplayed it, and Gragas was able to take over the top lane like no one else could. The fourth kill, a solo kill, at that point, Irelia was pretty much out of the game. Yeah, that Udyr level 2 cheese, you can't keep using it. Cheese has an expiration date. Like, <laughs> I was actually expecting them to use the Udyr flash in mid lane, because you don't actually have to secure the kill. What you can do is just get the Ari to blow her flash, and that gives Power of Evil an easier lane for him to compete with. Because Power of Evil, like we said before at the beginning of the show, uh, he is the focal point of their team. When he's having a good game, they tend to win. When he's having a bad game, they tend to lose. So if you get that summoner uh, trade-off, the jungler for the enemy mid lane, it's going to be an easier game for Power of Evil and an easier game for your team to win. Exactly, but that's the risk you're trying to take if you play carry top laners. The current meta allows carry top laners, that it allows the Vladimir, it allows the Hecarim, it allows the Aurelia. If you take that risk to take a uh, carry top laner on such a vulnerable lane like the top lane, you have to just see the gangs coming, and you have to see the Fnatic of a smart enough team to see it come. Yeah, but um, Vizichachi didn't, and it was just, he could do nothing on that Aurelia. Carry top laner, we'll talk about the carry mid laners, Febivin on Ari, fantastic. Why do you think Power of Evil went to his beloved precious Syndra when we have evaluated that it is his style to now go for those late game scaling champions, and he making it work, the virus works, the Kog'Maw works, the, works, um, the Orianna even works. So why do you think it is that he, they made this decision in this case? Uh, it's just a comfort champion for him. Uh, even though Syndra may not be meta for most of the teams that play in this league, it's a champion that he plays at a well enough level that works for them. And plus, the Unicorns of Love, when we were doing research on them in the quarterfinals, they had three win conditions. And one of those win conditions was Power of Evil setting up pickoffs for his team. And uh, the Syndra combo that applies the stun to the enemies is uh, another one of those uh, moves that can apply the stuns to allow the team to follow up, allow them to pressure the map. So uh, even though it may not be meta right now, it's still a comfort pick for him. And I think it's a fine pick. Absolutely. The composition itself made sense. And the Syndra pick into it made sense as well. The long raid stun, you can take out choke points with your CC. It makes sense. And one thing that you also have to keep in mind, if you, pit, if you put Power of Evil on Syndra, it becomes meta. Like, <laughs> that guy is so good on the champion, he can pick it whatever they do. Riot can't nerf it enough for Power of Evil to not pick up the... Uh, <laughs> to not uh, let uh, Power of Evil be good on the champion. So it made sense to me. They last picked it. It was perfectly fine. But the snowball from top lane was just too much for them. Don't mention nerf and there's Aurelia in the game, Dentist. How dare you? Um, looking ahead now, so do Unicorns of Love, by all reasons of logic, they're going to go crazy in the next game, we're going to pull it back. But, well, they did manage to get a little bit of that magic going, because somehow, some way, they do know how to, to push a lane up when you think that there's no chance at all. They do manage to almost get a dragon. The question is, will it be enough, or is Fnatic now completely in the zone? Well, that totally depends on the Unicorns of Love. Like, if Fnatic keeps their mentality up like they did and they just play their game down like they did the last uh, two games, then I see not a real chance for the Unicorns of Love to come back. My heart still says that the Unicorns are going to make it and they are able to pull out something new for them and throw Fnatic over and take the game. So we have another five game series, which would be amazing. But if you just look at the stats and you just look at what they did in the, part, in the last two games, you have to give it to Fnatic here. Yeah, and when your backs are up against the wall like you all is, this is your last opportunity to bring something up that you practice. Speaking to them before, they said they had the cheese ready. Was it only Varus or was it something else? So I'm really excited to go into this next draft and see on the brink of elimination what you Unicorns of Love are going to pull out. All right, then let's put um, our mouths where our money is. Oh, is the other way around? Who money knows? Where our mouth is. Money where her mouth is. <laughs> put it anyway, I don't care. Uh, anyway, but what I was trying to get at is let's try and predict something and another about going into the next game. And what you can see out of picks and bans, as said, trying to take Rek'Sai away from uh, Rainover and then give him in Gragas, who we know is great in anyone's hand and especially in Rainover, is not really the way to go. I didn't see Rek'Sai as that much of a problem. Of course, he's an early game jumbler. He's able to apply a lot of pressures in the lane. And Rainover is, uh, is a player who can play this champion to his seeds. But to be fair, Rainover is a perfect jungler. Like, he can pick up Gragas, he can pick up Sidrani. He has so many picks that he can fall back to that that one Rek'Sai uh, ban won't do that much. So I like to see just all junglers open and put something against it. Yeah, Fnatic doesn't need to really change anything. As far as the UL side goes, 
I'm expecting them to pull out a cheese strategy or at least a cheese champion. So the bands I would want to see are the champions in either the mid lane or the jungle that counteract whatever cheese they want to do. What those champions are, I have no idea. I have no idea what they're going to play. But I expect targeted bands towards that strategy. Yeah, well, we'll see. They have some time to discuss, and the pressure is on, because Fnatic is on championship point, just one game away from reclaiming their spot as the kings of Europe. Is this where they take it all, or can the Unicorns of Love come back to force a game five? Stay with us and find out. What a difference it's going to make. Remember, there's no flash and visage. Archie Raynov is going to land the body slam. Red buff's ticking away, and he's going to get first blood. They're going to go in. That's going to be a two-man onslaught. That's another kill for Hoodie. He's going to get himself a double kill. And Holo Holo has landed. Connect starts the yellow star, followed through. Does get interrupted by the barrel roll. The support of Fnatic is down, but there's the onslaught of shadows. Hoodie is just tearing unicorns apart, trying to run forward. Now, steal back. Can he play janitor and clean out? That's Question. Here's a Chachi now from the back line. Unicorns are scattered and low, and it looks like Fnatic should be able to clean up. Body slam goes out. But he's still alive. Keep it getting. He gets the kill. He's managed to catch Bardex and Raynover has managed to catch Power of Evil. Power of Evil does take down Hooney after all the damage earlier on. Stunned faces from the audience. Here's a TP from Hooney. It's going to be tough. And Power of Evil is going to die. Oh, Power of Evil is a He's got the triple, now looking for more. In his sight, he's going to make it back onto the lasers. Hooney is going to get dropped down. Sealback tries to chase further, not going to be able to secure it. Fnatic turn their attention to the Nexus Turrets. This will be the game.